Today we will talk about an exciting topic in our course, which is Simulink Toolbox. MATLAB is a very powerful tool as a basic programming language by itself, being able to handle very sophisticated calculations that could be physical, that could be um, mathematical, that could be engineering based, and that kind of power can be used to apply many applications and solve them in no time using MATLAB. What makes MATLAB more beautiful is that the team of developers behind it keep updating it day by day and keep coming up with new tools, new solutions that will help you achieve your job in the market in a shorter time period and at the same time being able to achieve things that you couldn't achieve using other programming languages. Of course, we talked and we discussed and learned all the details on how to use the coding basic part of MATLAB in order to solve your problems, regardless of the field of that problem. But more beautiful about MATLAB that it has something called toolboxes. Those are, you can imagine them as patches of solution boxes or solution tools that can help you use them in various applications today there's scientists and there's engineers who use them in machine learning in augmented reality and there is other teams who are using them in automotive industry other teams using them in um, automation vision analysis robotics all kinds of fields today we'll talk about one tool which is simulink a powerful tool that tool there's unlimited amount of tools within it that you can use to be able to solve your daily problems in your engineering job or even in your research field. Now we will talk and learn on how to install Simulink Toolbox in our machine. Of course, we're assuming that you already have your MATLAB on your machine. And uh, after that, we will learn what is the power of Simulink through uh, actual physical examples and try to know all the components of Simulink, how to install it, how to run it, how to use it in solving actual problems that we could face. And with that, you'll be introduced into the power of Simulink. Again, this is only scratching the surface of Simulink and uh, you can feel free on your own time to go as deep as you can with this tool. The more time you spend with it, the more examples you solve with it, the better you are and the more familiar you'll be with it and you'll be more pro in the Simulink tool. Now, I was uh, fortunate enough to work with Ford Motor Company back in time uh, with collaboration with a company called Magna Electronics, where Ford, by the time they had their F-150 pickup truck and uh, they were trying to solve a problem that people are facing every day, which is backing up your trailer into a certain spot and those of you who ever drove a vehicle and towed a trailer behind them they know how painful and how hard it is to park the trailer in a certain spot because when you turn right the trailer will turn left when you turn left trailer will turn right and sometimes uh, the trailer will jackknife then maybe you'll break the hitch or the joint and it just make it very hard well uh, we innovated and introduced a new system you can imagine this piece as a small steering wheel if you turn it to the right then the trailer will turn to the right if you turn to the left the trailer will turn to the left so you remove the hustle of confusion between the steering wheel angle and the trailer angle and that was done purely through simulink and uh, ford filed a patent that was issued and I believe that truck was F-150 2019 because, you know, in the automotive industry, they design features for the vehicle that is, uh, that's going to be released three years. So you design three years ahead of time to be able to deliver that feature on time. And uh, people loved it and made, made trailer backing up and trailer control way easier. Of course, there's a lot of algorithm being involved. And, you know, it's kind of it automated when you give the machine or the computer an order to move the trailer to the right then you don't touch the steering wheel that moment so the steering wheel will turn to the left and align and adjust and give you warnings and all kind of stuff 
to be able to guide you through where you want your vehicle to be and you'll be able to see your trailer on the back or rear view camera as well so that's that in case you're wondering where would we use this in real life that's a real life example that you can use if you have a chance to jump into an f-150 that's new enough then you'll be able to experience that feature and learn more about it now to install simulink of course you installed matlab there is something on the mathworks website which is the matlab makers and uh, they let you install something called installer when you go to that installer at a certain stage he tell you do you want to install matlab only or you want to install matlab and simulink there's 5g toolbox there's airspace block set airspace toolbox antenna toolbox audio toolbox automated driving toolbox autosar block set which is like based a kind of a branch from automated driving and control and design and there's all kinds of tools feel free to scroll through and read through them there's automotive toolbox there's a car sim which is car simulation toolbox there's a body chassis control toolbox everything just very helpful very useful so what i need to do just go install the installer run it again in your machine even though you have a matlab then when you reach here just tick on simulink and when installation is done you will be ready to have your Simulink under your MATLAB software. Now, when you do that, you go and run your MATLAB. Then you can either go to the command line and type in Simulink. Then he will pop up right away. Or the moment you install Simulink and restart your MATLAB software, you'll be able to see a tab here called Simulink. So you can click on this icon or you can type in, in your command line Simulink and you will be able to see this home screen of Simulink. What you see here, of course, you have open, you have recent projects, then you have a blank model, blank subsystem, blank library, and so on. So, of course, in Simulink, in MATLAB, when we do a code, we call it script. In Simulink, when you do a certain design, um, we call it design because we have components and blocks that we connect it together. If some of you who know LabVIEW, it's like the modern version of LabVIEW. So you start with a blank model. It's as if you say new script in the old uh, coding of MATLAB. Of course, there's examples, there's way to learn, there's videos, there's documentations from MATLAB or MathWorks itself. So that's how you run your Simulink as I'm gonna show you in a practical uh, explanation. Now, when you start or open on blank, like you click on blank model, the next screen you're gonna see is this screen. Now in this screen, there's an empty space there. So you gotta start to add components to your screen and connect stuff together. Then you click on library browser that will pull the Simulink library browser for you. Here you can choose commonly used blocks, continuous blocks, dashboards, math operations, lookup tables, matrix operations. Basically those are kind of categories or groups. If you say commonly used blocks, MATLAB use blocks as you're gonna see to connect stuff together. Imagine it as there's a block to put in your equation as the line of code that we said input ABC. So that's where you have your inputs. Then maybe you wanna add M is constant, which equals one. Then you add a block called constant and give it the value of one. Those will have lines connected to a kind of a joint where he combined them together then you do a certain operation and eventually maybe you want to show a graph then you add a block called graph xy graph then he will show you the graph of the data there that you are inputting so there's inputs and outputs imagine that as the case of your pc you input the mouse and keyboard and you output to the speakers and screens that's the exact same concept in the simplest form i can describe of course simulink files extension the file extension for the simulink of course, we are creating models, not scripts. So it's .mdl, standing for model. And um, always when you see that, you know that it's a Simulink model uh, versus the scripts that we create through MATLAB. Now, before um, we move into a more complicated examples, we need to walk you through a step-by-step -step method of constructing your first model with MATLAB. Now let's consider a signal processing example. In the example, we're going to examine the output of a sine wave generator. We will integrate the area under the sine wave and compare this with the original signal on a scope, a device that will plot the sine wave and the integral of the sine wave with respect to time 
um, from time equal to zero. So the time the simulation is started, the specific time, which in this case default to 10, the model can be built by applying the following steps. So we go in resources and we follow these steps like adding our sources that we need, like we need, we'll add a sine wave block, then we add a graph block, then we add an integrator or multiplexer, if you will, or a jointer. And based on that, we will draw the signal of a sine wave. Now let's jump into our MATLAB and uh, open the simulink together and go through components and start to build uh, this first model ever for you using simulink in the simplest format possible. So here's our MATLAB. So you can click on Simulink or you can type in Simulink, hit enter. That will open for you the Simulink page. Of course, you can maximize it so that you forget about the main MATLAB. You have new, you have examples, you have learn. So you can learn more and get documentation and materials and videos. But let's go here, blank model. We want to create something from scratch. Okay, so we start with create a blank model. Of course, here you have an empty space. How are you going to bring components and boxes and blocks? You go to library browser. In library browser, now you are ready. Of course, if it's in a list format, you can go with the box format, which is the one we discussed in our slide. So there's commonly used blocks, blocks that people use a lot. There's mathematical blocks. And there's dashboards, as in automotive dashboards. There's discrete, there's logic and bit operation. There's math operations, matrix operations signal routing, sinks, sources, that the constant we discussed about, there's strings and all those stuff. Start with commonly used blocks. So we said first, so you can see here there's a gain. It's good to know, you know, in most, in most cases in your textbook, you will see he's using this shape, but you don't know what it is. And the beauty of knowing what is this, you can search right away here. If you type in gain, he's gonna pull this for you because there's hundreds and thousands of components. So sometimes it's hard to find it unless you know the name. So this is called sum, this is called scope that will, it's like the scope or the generator in your electronics lab where he will generate the signal for you. There's products, like you can multiply this by this and he will produce that. So familiarize yourself, those arrows, it's like here is the input. Imagine it as a water gate. This is the input and this is the output and this is the gain. Gain means I can, like, if I'm inputting one, if I put here two, then I'm gaining two, either adding two or multiplying two based on what you want. There's a constant here, so I can plug in a constant. And you will, if you're confused now, that's fine. You're going to just uh, see the clear picture as we are applying our example. So our example say, you got a sine wave. So I'll type in the word sine wave. It's called sine wave. This is how it looks. I'll drag it and put it in here. So I got a sine wave. I can make it bigger if I want, I can make it smaller, but this is a block called sine wave. What it does, it generates sine wave. If you double click on that, you will be able to see options for sine wave. So he say output a sine wave in the form O of T equals amplitude multiplied by sine frequency by T plus phase plus bias. If you never studied about sine waves, this will be a mystery for you, but that's fine. The important is to know the concept. It's considered advanced for you to know Simulink, but it's good to know it now. So when you go advanced with it in the future, you'll be fine with that. So we have the amplitude here. Usually it has a numerical value. Here he assume amplitude as one. If you calculate and you find amplitude to be 10, or your equation have amplitude to be 10, you can put 10. Your frequency here, you can put her value, the phase and radians, and the sample time and so on. Leave it alone for now. Now what else we want? We want an integrator. So you take the sine wave, you want to do integration for it, mathematical integration, and see how it look like after integration. So back to library browser. Here, what I want to say, I want to say integrator. So integrator, hit enter. Here's our integrator. That's how it look like in your textbook. You know, it's always good to keep the aesthetics making sense for you. So that's the integrator for us. Now we need to combine the signal from the signal going from the sine wave all the way to a joint and the integrator will go to the same point and you show a scope. So let's add a scope. If you're confused so far, that's fine. Type in the word scope. Maybe here. Type in the word scope. 
you can pull back the component you want as fast as possible either double click or you drag and drop so in this case he had a problem so let's drag and drop okay put it in here make it bigger if you want you can move stuff around click lift mouse or click and hold you'll be moving it around so um then we will have a joint which will combine all these signals together and drag them to the scope that joint is called so back to the library um, if you go to commonly used components this one which is the mixer or multiplexer so this one will uh, mix the signals together so in your textbook one signal is coming from your sine wave generator and Another signal is coming from here all the way to the integrator. You can do that, so they will combine. So there's a signal going forward, there's a signal going to the integrator. The integrator is going to the multiplexer. So two signals are coming to the multiplexer. One of them is here, the other one is going to the integrator that will integrate the signal. Both will combine together and go to the um, scope or oscilloscope whatever you call it see everything look nice now I can run the code of course he will not show me a graph as in the coded uh, MATLAB you gotta double click to be able to see the signal when I double click he say the generated signal is looking like this I can make it bigger I can make it smaller I can print it as we learn about graphs before so that's exactly your first model in MATLAB. If I want to save it, I go ahead, save as. When I save as, I can either simulink model.slx or simulink model.mdl. Either way, so I can call it as um, wave generator. Of course, the naming still the same rules that we learned together before about the script. So it's good to follow those rules. So wave generator, there you go. You can come back anytime and change it. If you change the amplitude here to 20 instead of one, what's gonna happen? You run it, then you look on your scope and you should be able to see that your amplitude is going here to minus 20 for the yellow line and 20 in the positive side. So you're changing it for the yellow line. So you're comparing without integration signal versus with integration signal. How does it look like? Blue is without integration. Yellow is with integration. And you can compare these two. If you're not familiar with the mathematics of that, that's totally fine. But at least you know how to use this software in case you need it. Since there is many components for many applications, you can sky's the limit. Whatever you did as coding in MATLAB, you can do it as a form of simulink in a drag and drop visual way in the past there's a program called i believe from microsoft called visual basics which is like similar as that and in the industry today very old program called lab view using the same concept blocks inputs and outputs they do stuff for you and create visuals and um, dynamics so very helpful to learn so that's your first model that's ever constructed now moving forward let's create a mass spring damper model now the simplest ordinary differential equation that can be used to investigate the oscillation of a dynamic system is the following differential equation if you're not aware of the math that's totally fine the important to know the execution the technical execution of such kind of situation like implementing an equation and producing that as a graph in simulink so the equation is looking like this and you can rearrange it to be x double prime or the double or the second derivative of x will equal minus b the first derivative of, of x with respect to time minus uh, w naught squared by x plus a which is amplitude sine omega t which omega here represents the frequency i believe now there is an initial conditions w naught to the power of two would equal k over m which equal one and b would equal r over m which equal 0.5 these two keep in mind and the amplitude will be one these keep in mind and the script that you gotta build or the model that you gotta build should look like this you have a sine wave then you have a component called gain 
and you have here addition you can change those marks as needed we will see together then you go to integrator another integrator and xy graph and scope and here we have a gain another gain over here remember he gave us initial condition 1 and 0.5 so you are trying to plan these here when you run your model you'll be able to see xy graph here and you'll be able to see the scope of the signals here as simple as that i already have it ready but i highly suggest on you to go ahead and build it yourself so that you'll be familiar in using the tool and run it and see how it goes play with the numbers play with initial values and be very familiar with it the model that your textbook is suggesting what i had i had a sine wave here i had a gain here which is one and i had here what they call it as a sum integrator another integrator xy graph that's the name of the component and the scope and here we have a gain another gain now how to get this sine wave browsing library then go here i type in sine wave or sine maybe it will show up so sometimes if you hit enter it doesn't work just hit on this thing so you get the sine wave here but you see sine wave here have input and output but i need only a sine wave who have only output i don't need anything to input to it because always if you have a component have input and output input and output need to be connected otherwise you get an error i double click so you can pre-arrange her input values drag it in that's how you get your sine wave now how to get the gain if you know how to get those components, then you are on the right track. Nothing will be hard on you. Just type in the word gain, hit enter, then that's your gain with input and output. I can search another gain to put it in here, or I can rotate this gain. How to rotate this gain to look like this? Because this gain is going to the left side, while this gain to the right side. I can select the gain, right click, format, rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. You see, he's rotating. Do it again or use a screenshot if you are in a hurry. Control Shift R. Then now here's our gain. So if I, so that's one way. The other thing I can name back stuff. Like if I want to call this gain as Q value in our equation, you can call it whatever you want. Here, the sine wave, you can call it a signal generator if you want. Or you can call it whatever you want to make it as descriptive as possible. Here, XY graph, you can see temperature versus pressure graph here you can say scope you can say output you can say evaluation whatever you want so the way it is it will be looking like this so how i connect from here to here you see this cross sign i drag it all the way to here when it's black i let it go and this guy is going all the way to here and he's going here as well to do that i can't initiate one from here but i can initiate one from here and going back so it will join the main line going from the gain all the way to the graph that's one thing um, second thing integrator here let's see how integrator go so we drag from here to here then i can't create one here but i can pull this backward so he join the mainstream let's try to pull up integrator just for the sake of demonstration integrator so you look at integrator, how you know integrator? Usually it's in the form of one over s in many cases. I think he didn't take my search. Yep, he didn't. Sometimes you gotta hit here. Enter is not enough. My integrator have input, one input and one output. So it's this guy. Sometimes you need two outputs and one input or different kind of integration, but I can use this. So that's what's that. Again, I can double click. If there's any issue condition, I double click on it. And I identify what's my initial condition. Is there a certain value? External reset. Sometimes you got to say, is it rising? Is it falling? This is kind of a technical thing I don't want to confuse you about. Initial condition source. Is it internal or external? Is there an external equation that's affecting that? Is the output limited? Um, do I need to show state port? Do I need to show saturation port? Means there's a lot of signals or he can't. It's overflowing him that he can't handle absolute tolerance then you can choose that as well and play with it as needed just play around with it you know i don't want to confuse you so much with it you can see this is not connected so i can pull it all the way back here and i can run my code in this case look at my scope i can see the signals double click here on my graph 
it will open a new page to show me the XY graph. This is how the XY graph is looking like for me. Now, one more thing here, the sum. When you pull up the sum from here, it doesn't look like that. You got to play with it a little bit. So if I hit sum, you see the sum, he have two plus signs. But me, I need plus sign here, addition here, and subtraction for these two. What should I do? Double click, list of signs. This one, if I say plus, 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 What's going to happen in this case? Apply. See, he had plus, plus, plus. So the first one represent this. Second one represent this. Third one represent this. And fourth one represent this. You can even add another plus. So he will show in the fourth one. Okay. Now. So come back to three pluses. That's how it is. Now, I need in this case, this is plus, this is minus, and this is minus. What should I do? I just go back there, change the second and the third to be minus, 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 hit enter. Now I get what I want, plus, minus, minus. So sometimes you don't exactly find the same thing, but you can double click and play with the properties to be able to make it look the way you want it to look. And here you have what's called MUX or known as multiplexer. When you study um, circuits and electronics, you will understand what is the multiplexers do. But here it's just combining the signals. Most of these conventions are based on signal processing science. That's why those names could, could be not making sense to you. But it just combines two signals into one. That's what it does. And that's about it for the mass spring damper. Of course, we'll be able to generate the XY graph. We'll be able to generate our scope output. And that's how the oscillation of our dynamic system represented by this equation look like now for a bouncing ball model assume you throw a ball and you bounce it the bouncing ball model is example of a hybrid dynamic system hybrid dynamic system is a system that involves both continuous dynamics and discrete transitions where the system can change state values can jump the continuous dynamics of bouncing ball is simply given by the equation x double prime or the second derivative of x would equal minus g. g is the acceleration of gravity. x is the vertical distance of the ball after it's been released from a height. x note and speed v note uh, would be, of course, the derivative of the distance x. The ground is assumed to be at x equals zero. The system has two continuous states, position x and velocity v to be the derivative of the distance. Again, if you're not aware of that mathematics, that's fine. We just blindly apply it together. The important to know how to use the tool, how to connect stuff, and how to generate output from it. The hybrid system aspect of the model originates from the modeling of a collision of the ball with the ground. Assume a partially elastic collision with the ground. The velocity before collision and velocity after collision V minus can be related by the coefficient of restitution of the ball. K in this case as following v plus would be minus k multiplied by v minus or v to the right side minus k to the v to the left side depending on the convention x equals zero bouncing ball will display a jump in continuous state which is velocity in the transition condition x equals zero now let's go ahead and generate a model for that what we do we create here an integrator with three inputs and one output we have here a component called constant then we give it a value minus 9.81 i think you guessed that it's the gravitational acceleration then here you have gain you have here comparison things should be less or equal to zero to pass otherwise it will not pass you get initial velocity here initial velocity here to input then you output to the gain and go back to initial velocity as a filtration and that would go to a next integrator you have initial velocity here and the final value will be displayed in this oscilloscope. And here you will be able to display the signal before the second integration manipulation and after. Like with initial velocity from here and without it. Let's go ahead. I have already a ready script or a ready model for you that we can go through and run it together and see how it goes. Okay, as you can see here, we have the model ready. Of course, to pan, to pan the design, you just Click on your middle scroll wheel of your mouse. He will be able to let you pan. You want to select an item on the left uh, button for your mouse. So here we have something we call it as a constant. 
to be able to pull it up. You know how to pull up the oscilloscope now. You know how to pull up integrator. You know how to pull up the gain. And you know we will try to tell you how to pull up the compare and how to pull up this component. So go to the library. So the first component that we want is constant. Call it constant. That's how you get your constant. Now, another one. You see this compare here? That's how we get it. Compare to constant. Of course, it's going from left to right. We want it to be right to left. What we're going to do? We're going to control shift R or right click format rotate counterclockwise or rotate clockwise until or you can even use flip block then until it's in the right direction but here it's zero here it's three what should i do double click and give it the value the constant value would be zero you can even choose greater than equal than not equal whatever logic you want that's how you replicate that and you connect it as needed you know okay and that we know it already what else initial velocity how would you get the initial velocity here so you just go right here and you try to type in initial and you should be able to see what we call it as initial condition that's the name we put it in here initial condition in this case it's 15 not 1 i give it the value of 15 and connect it as needed to both sides wherever I want it to go. If I want it to go here, I can. You know, it depends. Here he tell me you can do that because the flow is backward. You can't put a forward with a flow backward. You can go to this one, for example. And he'll be able to show you in the oscilloscope the value of that. But always make sure you connect all your components. If you keep something not connected, he's gonna give you an error for that. Of course, you can put it in the way you want as the line of signal, but it always makes sense to have things big and spread from each other so it will be as proficient as possible. When you're ready, as you run the code, you run this thing and you double click here, you're gonna see the scope of this one. Double click here, you're gonna see the scope of this one. What happened here in this case, you are seeing the signal before it get integrated again, like right here. And after integration, before integration, after integration. See, that's exactly what's the purpose of it. Of course, sky is the limit. You can go as complicated as possible with this. As I told you, we did a smart uh, trailer control just by using Simulink. And you turn that eventually as a code and you fuse it into the computer of the vehicle and you should be good to go. That's all about it for Simulink. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Of course, there's, you need a whole semester, you need a year talking about Simulink. The more you teach yourself, the more you go off your comfort zone, the more you spend time learning about it, the more pro, the more professional you are, the more tools that you can produce using the software.